Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And very good morning. Today, you will see the remaining part of our uh, vector algebra, that is uh, particle in space. How to analyze the forces acting on particle in space by considering the vector uh, algebra. Okay. We know in reality, the particle, though we have considered in our previous uh, lecture class, previous lecture I have told that the force are acting co planar, acting in a single plane. But in reality, the particle will be lying in the space, a three dimensional space, and uh, the forces will also be three dimensional. Okay, the force will be existing in a three dimensional space. So we have to uh, understand the concept of three dimensional space and we have to apply the vector algebra for the three dimensional space. Okay, so we, today we will see about uh, the vector algebra for a three dimensional space, particle in three dimensional space, and how to find out the resultant force vector, how to resolve them into different components in a three dimensional space. Okay, so uh, these uh, topics we will cover. So a particle in space is generally represented by a three-dimensional coordinate system. Okay. So we know a coordinate system is a reference, a data. Either it may be a Cartesian coordinate system or a cylindrical coordinate system, polar coordinate system. Okay. So we consider a Cartesian coordinate system, a three-dimensional coordinate system. Generally, in order to decide about uh, the three axes of our coordinate system, we use the right-handed coordinate system, like that we have a right hand, so the thumb will be the z-axis, thumb will be our z-axis, your fingers will be, uh, I mean, will be uh, indicating the x-axis and your palm will be the y-axis. So x and y are in a plane, they should be perpendicular to each other, they are act acting in a plane. So we consider your fingers are indicating towards x and palm towards y and your z is thumb. Okay, so that is called right-handed coordinate system. Okay. So we have a vector, for example, vector A is this, denoted by an arrow mark. The z is the thumb. Here you have the x-axis and y-axis. Okay. So this A can be resolved by parallelogram law. Okay, we apply the parallelogram law successively in the three-dimensional space. Parallelogram law can be applied successively in the three-dimensional space. For example, if you consider first the parallelogram is formed like this. Okay, perpendicular to x and y, parallel to the z axis. It, it is formed like this. So it it has we will resolve A into two components, one component along z axis, the other component perpendicular to z axis. Okay, one component A z acting along z axis and A dash will be perpendicular to z axis. We write in the vector represents expression A vector equals to A dash vector plus A z vector. A dash plus A z. Okay, so this is the first paragraph. So we have resolved into two components. Now we consider another parallelogram for resolving the A dash or A prime component. So this parallelogram is formed by two uh, vectors are resolved into two vectors. We say AX and AY. AX and AY. So we can write the vector equation as A prime vector equals to AX vector plus AY vector. So if you sum up A prime, A vector equals to AX plus AY plus AZ. So we have resolved into three components, each vector acting along the axis X, Y and Z. Okay. So if we just apply what we have said in the parallelogram law only in order to resolve the components, not to resolve the components. And uh, in order to simplify our uh, complex uh, system of forces, we consider unit vector. Okay, unit vectors uh, in three dimensional space, how we can write them? 
So here vector can be represented by the magnitude and direction separately. In the unit vector expression, if you denote force as a unit vector representation, we can represent magnitude separately and direction separately. So that it will be easy to separate them like our free body diagram. We are, we are discussing about a system which can be uh, analyzed easily by considering a free body diagram. What is a free body diagram? What is it? Huh? Isolating isolating the body, that is the first thing. Okay. You are isolating the bodies. A system may comprise of many particles or many bodies. We consider each body separately. We isolate that body from the other bodies. For example, we have a cable, we have a ring. The cable is attached to the ring and another rope is there. So three particles are there and also the frame, for example, sheep or some uh, grain is there. That is, so we, we, we split them into different particles. The end of the grain, <coughs> cable, ring, rope. Okay, so each particle we have split it. Now we consider the forces acting on each particle, each body. This is called free body. We simplify it by considering a free body diagram. In the same way, force is a vector quantity. It is made of magnitude, direction and sense. It has got three characters, magnitude, direction and sense. In order to analyze them easily, we separate it into a magnitude component and a direction component. So unit vector can be used to separate the magnitude and direction for easy analysis. Okay. So we represent unit vector as UA. So U A it's a dimensionless vector. A vector can be written as scalar A times unit vector U A. Okay. Say for example, so this is your vector. The dimension of your vector A, the magnitude of vector A is shown like this. It's unit vector, it, it indicates the direction. Okay. Unit vector is used to indicate the direction. Or from the unit vector, you can find out the direction. And magnitude, for obtaining the magnitude, we use the scalar A. So you, oh sorry. The unit vector UA can be found by dividing our vector by the scalar. A, A vector by A will give you the unit vector A. Okay. <coughs> so in three dimensions, the set of Cartesian vectors, the unit vector can be represented by Cartesian vectors I, J and K, if it is three dimensions. In uh, previous lectures, we have seen it, it is represented in a two dimension space by using I and J. I for X axis, J for Y axis. Here we have Z axis also. So we consider I, J and K. So each uh, expression of vector is a unit vector. I is a unit vector, J is a unit vector, K is a unit vector acting on X, Y and Z axis respectively. So this will be useful for simplifying our vector algebraic operations. So now if you consider the same A vector, it will be written like this. Ax component of A along x axis times the unit vector i, y along okay, component of y. Similarly, A is at k. <coughs> so we, we consider unit vector concept and we separate the vector A into three components. We resolve it into three components. AXI vector plus AYJ vector plus AZ K unit vector. Okay. Suppose if you want to find the magnitude of the Cartesian vectors, it can be obtained by again using the Pythagoras theorem how we did earlier, similar to what how we did earlier. Okay. For example, the vector A, the magnitude of vector A can be obtained by squaring the A dash plus a is a k square, a, a dash square plus a is a square. And a dash is again a x square plus a y square, so it will be a x square plus a y square plus a is a square root. Okay. So this will be our magnitude of vector. And in order to find the directions, we have to find the direction cosines or directions of uh, our uh, resolved components. In that case, we consider the angle made by the vector with respect to particular uh, axis. Yeah. Here, for example, if you consider x axis, uh, this is your vector. The green uh, line with arrow I have shown is the vector vector A. Eh? Vector A. So it makes an angle of alpha with uh, x axis. 
alpha, beta curve. So this is the adjacent side. These are opposite, opposite side. It is a right angle triangle form. Okay. So the angle alpha made by uh, uh, the vector A with the x-axis is shown. Similarly, for y-axis, this is theta. You, you are considering uh, a plane. Okay, lamina, triangular lamina, which is inclined to okay, uh, beta angle with vector A. Similarly, for z axis also, it is gamma. Alpha, beta and gamma are the angles made by our vector with respect to the particular axis. So this is again shown here. So if you, if you consider these angles, the direction cosines can be obtained. Cos alpha, because you know as I, as I shown here, this is vector AX will be here, AX, component of X will be acting along this direction, so this direction is your adjacent side, so adjacent side means cos, okay, so cos alpha is AX by AA, similarly cos beta is AY by AA, and cos gamma is, A is sorry, there is a, A is that by A, and we know from my previous slide, if you see here, for unit vector, Unit vector is written as vector A divided by scalar A. Okay, so if you apply this here, so this UA can be written as vector A by scalar A. Or uh, if you resolve the components, AX by A plus A by A, because the vector A is the combination of AX, A1 and AZ, I split into 3. And this AX by AA is cos alpha. A by A A is cos beta and cos gamma. So this UA can be written as cos alpha I plus cos beta J plus cos gamma K. Okay. So if you consider this is a dimensionless vector, UA is a dimensionless vector. That means the dimension is unity, unit vector. This is we call it as unit vector. So I, J, K and vector components. So they are, if you, if you find out uh, the resultant of the magnitude of the all the three vectors, it should be one, unity. Magnitude is unity, okay. So I, similar to what we did for AX, AY, AZ in our previous slide, similar to this, apply this concept here. So if you take uh, cos alpha i, cos beta j and cos gamma k are the three vectors. Now I take the square root of this, cos square <coughs> alpha, cos square beta and cos square gamma will be equal to 1. Okay. So we use this equation, I am telling about these equations, this equation will be uh, useful for finding the direction cosines, angles of the vector. Suppose even if, if you are resolving different components, the resultant vector can be found using these equations. Similarly, resolving, resolving of uh, components, the uh, resolved component angles, the magnitude of resolved components can be obtained by using this uh, concept for we use right here. So we use unit vector concept to find out the magnitude and direction separately for the vector in space. Whether it is a pole or any vector quantity, it can be found by using the unit vector concept. Now we will see one example. So this is our vector, I told you. Okay, so A cos alpha. This is vector, vector scalar times unit vector. So I can write this as so before we see the example, we will we'll see about the addition and subtraction also. If you have two vectors, A and B, the resultant vector A plus B can be obtained by adding the corresponding components. I components are added, J components are added and the K components are added. Okay, so for example, vector A is AXI plus AYJ plus AZK and vector B is like this. So resultant uh, vector will be A plus B, AX plus BX. So adding the corresponding components, you will get, okay. Similarly, for subtraction, if there is a uh, resultant difference, if we subtract the corresponding components, we will get the resultant difference. Suppose if you consider the forces, there are many forces that are acting. We, are, we apply the same concept, we resolve them into different components along X, Y and Z. We sum up, we will get the resultant along X resultant along y and resultant along z, sum of all the resultants will get the resultant poles of the system. <coughs> the same concept can be applied for poles as well. And, uh, okay. 
Now we will see the example. We have a ring. This ring is pulled by, for example, cables are there. So each cable produces some force. So this force is already given in the form of cartesian vectors. 60J plus 80K. F1 is 60J plus 80K Newton. F2 is 150I minus 100J plus 100K Newton. Now we have to find out the resultant of the two forces. Okay. So we have the components, I, J, K components are given. We have to find out the resultant. So first, we add up the corresponding components. There is no, uh, so in the F1, this is F1, this is F2. Okay. We add I with I, J with J like that. There is no I component for F1. So 50, <coughs> this is 150, sorry, 150, uh, 50I <coughs> minus 40J, 150I minus 40J plus 180K. And this one is the same. So if you want to find out the magnitude of the resultant vector, take the square root and uh, square the components. Okay. Fx square plus Fy square plus Fz square, this, this I got as 191 Newton. And uh, unit vector is obtained by using the concept of A vector by AA. So Fr vector by Fr, magnitude of Fr. So I got the unit vector also. Why I am getting the unit vector? This will be useful for finding the cosines, the angles. Okay. So the this is cos alpha, 50 by 191 is cos alpha. 40 by minus 40 by 191 is cos beta. 180 by 191 is cos gamma. Okay. Whatever I have uh, the, uh, the constant uh, uh, with the I vector, uh, J and K, they are all cosines. Cos alpha, cos beta, corresponding cosines. That is why I am finding the unit vector. So I got the cosine values. Cos alpha equals 0 0.2617. So you can find out alpha. Cos beta is so much, you can find out beta. Also cos gamma. That is how it is useful for finding the resultant as well as direction for any vector in this case. Okay? Any doubt you can ask. So how you know this? Good, it's 150. Yeah, I think that's 150 I vector. Mr. Two point A and B. We have to find out position difference of the two points 
so that we will find out a vector, unit vector acting along AB. So if you represent as a unit vector acting along AB, then we can convert it into force, we can resolve it to I, J and K components. See in this problem, the I, J and K are given. Okay. The force, the right force acting, the resolved components are given. So how to convert the force into resolved components? For that, we should find out the unit vector acting along the particular force. Instead of the unit vector acting along I, J and K in X, Y and Z axis, we consider a unit vector acting along the force component. Okay. Because the force itself, itself is represented as F times its unit vector. F times its unit vector. Force can be represented as F times unit vector. So we have to find out the unit vector acting along the line of action of force. Okay. So for that, we should know the concept of position vectors. Now we will see about the position vectors. Okay. So say for example, we have a rope AB or line AB. So the position vector, initially position vector is denoted by R. Like you know velocity is denoted as V and acceleration as A or sometimes it's in some books they denote it as F, acceleration is denoted as F. We have a convention for each vector quantity. So position, is it a vector quantity or scalar quantity? Yeah, I told position vector, I already told the answer, isn't it? So position, position of a point, it, it is locating at a particular position means you have a distance. So distance is the magnitude and what angle it is from the particular reference. Say we have the origin, from the origin if you connect the particular point, the line connecting the, the origin and the particular particle will be at some angle. That means it has got a direction. So position vector is a vector as, as I told. So it has got magnitude as well as direction. Okay. So the position vectors are denoted by R vector. R vector. The arrow mark indicates it is a vector. Okay. Suppose if you consider position acting a position vector of AB, we denote it, it, it by a suffix AB. Okay. R AB vector. Say R uh, AB is there. We have to find out R AB, and uh, we split it into two components like this from the origin. So this is R B, this is R B and this is R A. So you should write the equation R A plus R A B equals to R B. If you if you consider the head and tail sequence, so the R A is starting here. It goes this is the head of R A. Then the head of R A B starts here, so these two are in the same, okay, same clockwise, same direction, whereas R B is going in the opposite direction. If you consider they rotate, if you consider this as A B, R A B, vector R A B, this is vector A, okay, this is vector B. position vector B. So if you uh, move the vector, consider they are moving, it will be like this in clockwise direction. Whereas this RB is moving in the opposite direction. They are, so they are sign is different. That is why we have considered RA plus RAB equals to RB. Or you can say RA plus RAB minus RB equals to 0. It is a closed triangle. So the closed triangle means the net vector will be 0. R A plus R A B minus R B should be equal to zero. So R B is brought to the other side. So what? R B minus R B. Okay. R B minus R B. So this will be R A B equals to R B minus R A. Position difference between the two points. Position difference between the two points. Suppose if you consider in this example. We have a line, the dimension, the, 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 the coordinates of the line is given, the point A where it is, point B where it is, okay, the position of the points are given, for example, in the x direction it is 2 meters, 
in the z direction 3 meters point b and uh, y direction okay so 2 2 and 3 are the three um, positions for point b point a it is given as 3 1 and 2 3 1 and 3 1 and 0 it's acting along uh, in that it is on the surface level So now we have to find out position beta R A B considering the points. I have written the coordinates here minus 2, minus 2 and 3. <coughs> this is 1, 0 and minus 3. So we will add the corresponding components, x component, y component, z component. So the summing of the components will give you the vector, position vector R A B. <coughs> Why, why this, uh, this is minus? This, see, this is that I mean, x axis consider this is positive x axis, the arrow head shows the positive direction. Opposite the arrow head will be the negative, negative direction. So this is positive, this minus 2 meters is negative. So the first the coordinates are obtained, then the coordinates are considered as i, j and k coordinates. So minus 2 i, p is minus 2 i, minus 2 j, 3 k. Minus 2, minus 2 i plus 2 j, b vector, or b vector. Minus 2i plus correct plus a vector
Okay. So you have a yeah. You have a man pulling a rope, a cable, a guard. You can say we have to find out the force in the form of Cartesian vector and also its direction. Okay. Actually, the magnitude of the force is given 70 newton. Magnitude of the force is given. You have to find out the force in the form of Cartesian vector. Okay. Because this finding the force in the Cartesian vector will be useful in finding out the resultant forces. As I told earlier, if you, it will be useful in uh, analyzing a system of forces. So we, have, we should know how to convert the given force, magnitude of force is given, given force into Cartesian form, then we have to find out its direction also. Okay. So the distances are given 30 meters, point A is 30 meters, point B, okay, the position from X, Y and Z are given. So first we have to find out the position vector. Okay, the coordinates are given here. A is A is on Z axis. Okay, so it will be 0 X, 0 Y at 30 meters height. The height is only given, so 0 x, 0 y and z is 30 centimeters. B is here, so this distance is 8 meters. So the left of y is 8 meters, height is 6 meters, along your x axis 12 meters. So the 12 is positive, 8 is in the negative direction, 6 is also in the positive direction. So we got 12 minus 8. Minus, where is it? Here, 2, 2 minus 8 and 6 are the 3 coordinates. 2 minus 8 and 6. 2 is positive and 12. Eh? 12 is positive, 8 is negative and 6 is positive. So 12 refers to x, x direction coordinate on x. This is your z. So we got the coordinates first. First you have to find out the coordinates, then if you have the coordinates, you can write the vector, the position vector for each point, okay, R A and A R B. Position vectors are to be written, that one step is skip, okay. Position vector for A and position vector for B is skip, I directly found the position difference. R A B is position difference, okay. So you can write that position vector equation also in front of So R A position vector for point A M we can write it as 0 I plus 0 J plus 30 K. Similarly R B can be found as written as 12 I minus 8 J plus 6 K. So if you find the position difference between R A B is nothing but R B minus R A. Okay. Position difference between the two points, we got 12 minus 0, this components. So after finding the position vector, we have to find out the magnitude for the position vector using the Pythagoras theorem. Then unit vector for that. Okay, so unit vector is the component along x by the resultant magnitude. Then after this, we, are, we can find out using the concept of unit vector again, f vector equals to scalar f times unit vector. So 70 times unit vector will be our force vector. So we got the force in the, in the form of Cartesian coordinate. You can find the cosines, direction cosines by using unit vector. So for cos inverse of 12 by 28 will be your alpha. Cos inverse of 8 by minus 8 by 28 will be your beta. Cos inverse of minus 24 by 28 will be gamma. So first we find position difference, then the magnitude of the position difference vector, then we find unit vector along AB, UAB, okay. UAB is unit vector along AB, then using the unit vector concept, we find the force in terms of Cartesian vector, okay. After that, direction questions also obtained. We will see one more problem. So we have a circular plate. It is 
partially supported by the circular thread in the say dish antenna, part of a dish antenna, it is partially supported by a cable. Okay, so you have to, the force magnitude is given, the force magnitude is 500 Newton, you have to express this force in the form of Cartesian vector. Okay, so you are, you are given the positions, 2 meters, okay, and this distance is 1 meter, and one angle is given, instead of giving the okay, distances, they have given the angle. Okay, so considering the angle, you can find out using the right angle triangle concept, trigonometry, we can find out the distances. Distances are point P. Point A is on Z axis, similar to our previous problem. Point A is on Z axis, so only height is there, 2 meters. Okay, point P is in the okay, third quadrant here, between X and Y, positive side of X and Y, like this here. So the angle is given, the distance 1 meter is given, so we have to find out the distances with respect to origin, the coordinates we have to find out. So this is a right angle triangle form. So you have this right angle triangle. So this opposite side is hypotenuse times sin 45. This angle is 45. So hypotenuse times sin 45. This will be cos 45. This adjacent side will be cos 45. So you can find out the distances along y and distances along x. Distances along uh, x is 1.071 because 1 meter, 1 meter plus 0 0.707. So 1.077 along y it is 1 meter. Okay. So this is this is cos 45. This is 1 plus sin 45. 1.707. 1, 1 meter plus opposite side. Sin 45. So this is cos 45. It is on the plane, here you have, the disc is on the plane x, y, so your z will be 0. Okay? So all, all the coordinates are in the positive direction, between positive x and y. So we first we have to find out R, A, B, similar to our previous problem, first find out R, A, B. Then magnitude of R A B, unit vector of A B, then force. The same procedure we can adapt and find. So first we have to find the R A B vector, position vector, the magnitude of position vector, then unit vector for A B acting along A B, then force, magnitude of force, then force. It's already given. It's just so this is what as Cartesian form. You have to find the force in the Cartesian vector. Only one part is remaining. We have to find out equilibrium of particle in space. Okay, so that we will see in next class.